Hi, Dr. Griffin. My name is Maxine Simon, and I am part of group number three. Me and my team members work very hard together to create this wonderful presentation for you. Mary will be our voiceover for each slide, and I will be the navigator as I click on this slide. You will hear Mary voice describing what each slide is about. I do hope you enjoy our presentation, and I present to you group number three, Peers. Hello, Professor. My name is Mary Franklin, and I will be narrating this project. We are Group 3, and we covered the importance of peers within our systems. Hello, Professor. My name is Mary Franklin, and I will be narrating this project. We are Group 3, and we covered the importance of peers within our systems. We decided, we decided to demonstrate how peers influence our systems through the show, Everybody Hates Chris. Our character, Chris, is the main character in the show. While he is a sweet kid, he always finds himself in misfortunate circumstances, and those around him tend to play roles in how he ends up in those circumstances. Our character, Chris, is... Our character, Chris... Sorry. Here's how his friends impacted him. Here's how his friends. First, First is his friend Tasha. Tasha. Tasha lives right, right next door to Chris and is one of the only girls that finds interests in him. Chris has a huge crust on Tasha, but tries his best not to let that interfere with their friendship. While they did have a romance, it wasn't for long. They realized that they were better off as friends. Greg is Chris's best friend. Throughout his time in high school, Greg is his confidant. Chris goes to Greg quite often for advice, and while Greg has little to no idea of Chris's hardships at home, he tries his best to help Chris with his school life. Having a friend like Greg to help a child navigate is always important for child development. Caruso was the school bully. Although he wouldn't be considered a friend, he was one of Chris's biggest stressors. If he wasn't beating Chris up or taking his lunch money, he was humiliating him in front of other students. Caruso is a particularly important character to Chris's systems because bullies like Caruso are the reason children suffer from depression, anxiety, and have a hard time socializing. While Chris had a few romantic encounters, they all seemed to be unrequited. With no real chance of true love, Chris grew to believe that he would never have a romance. The only example of romance he had was his parents, and he never had faith that he would find love the way his parents had. This is how social systems impacted Chris personally. This is how social systems... This is how social... Sorry. First, First, we have microsystems. A microsystem consists of families, peers, and schools. The microsystem focuses on each one of those individually and how they impact a child. Within Chris's microsystem, he has a nuclear family, which operates in a way where his father consistently works and his mother takes care of the home. Families similar to Chris's tend to play a role in why children are faced with psychological problems over time. The psychological problems stem from a number of different factors, with the mother taking care of paying the bills, cooking the dinner, and doing most of the house chores while the father spends the whole day working, the older children are somewhat forced to mature quicker than usual. This is because they spend most of their quote-unquote playtime taking care of their younger siblings because the parents don't have the time to do so. Chris's school, peers, and job also play a huge role in Chris's microsystem. With his school being several blocks away, Chris was open to a completely different demographic. He was exposed to students of different races, ethnic groups, and socioeconomic statuses. 
With Chris being the only African-American student and not having the same economic stature as his peers, he often struggled with where to fit in. While going to a school that challenges you educationally is a good thing, maybe Chris would have excelled in a school where the students were similar to him. Chris's peers is what kept him afloat and helped him navigate through his everyday time at school. A small supportive peer group like his is super important for a child developing social skills. First, we have microsystems. Next, we have mesosystems. Mesosystems refer to how things like home life and school life combine impact a child. Chris's parents weren't involved in his school life. The only interactions his parents had with the school were all bad interactions. They mainly consist of when Chris wasn't doing well. Most of the time, when a parent is involved in a child's academics, good or bad, the child is more likely to prosper. Chris's family and neighborhood interactions were similar to his family and school interactions. The only time his family interacted with his neighborhood was when something bad was going on. Had his family took more pride in their neighborhood, maybe Chris would have been more confident in where he came from. Next, we have mesosystems. Next is his family's ecosystem, which is his financial status. Chris's family had low income. His father was always looking to save money. They had to share most valuable things like rooms and televisions so they could make ends meet. Things were always broken and things were always fixed poorly. And the family had to go without with a lot of things. Now we have our macro systems, which is how culture plays a role in child development. 
As an African-American family, culture influenced many aspects of Chris's life, from cooking and eating soul food to speaking African-American vernacular English. A lot of his fears for things like blackouts in his neighborhood and police officers stem from a long line of violence associated with the two. Chris's culture required him to be more cautious than his peers at school. Lastly, we have chrono systems, which involves temporal changes that affect the development of an individual. Chris's experience growing up in his neighborhood would likely affect his ability to relate to his peers. Chris's childhood was also affected by the crack epidemic. The crack era was a major life-shaping event for many African-American families. In inner cities, crack marketers came to supply the drug 24-7. The increase in the market led to the increase in violence in the city which often scared his mother, whose biggest fear was one of her children becoming a crackhead. Lastly, we have This is our plan of action. Our purpose for this intervention is to ensure that Chris gets the help that is specifically geared towards his issues. Me and my fellow therapists agree that Chris suffered a lot of verbal abuse. Our first step is to evaluate what Chris thinks of the abuse and how it impacts his self-esteem today. Our purpose Next, Next, we plan, plan to have a family intervention. We believe all the children need more time with both parents, but also that the parents need to let up on some of Chris's responsibilities. That would give him more time to do things children his age get to do. Next, we plan to... Lastly, we believe that Chris should join something like a self-defense class where he learns to not only protect himself, but also stick up for himself so that he's less likely to be bullied at school and it gives him a little bit more confidence. Let In theory, the recommended therapies will start with targeting the verbal abuse Chris faces and what effects they have on his self-esteem. Next, the therapies will focus on his family aspect. The recommended intervention for the family is for his parents to be more involved and for them to take some of the responsibility off of Chris. Lastly, the therapists recommend that Chris take classes to help defend himself. Not only will it boost his self-esteem, but it will also prevent him from being bullied. Thank you, and that was our presentation. The following slides include our reference sheet, which includes two different um, two reference pages describing the different websites and articles that we choose for our project. Thank you. The end.